Honoring Our Fallen officially started in 2011, but the seed for Honoring Our Fallen was planted on the 10th of November, 2009. My name is Gunnery Sergeant Niall Yaki. I'm Dee Dee McPherson. My name is Leslie Garcia. My name is Rod Cox. My name is Priscilla Cardenas. I'm Sergeant First Class Devin Sorensen. And I am a Gold Star mom. I was a Remains Escort. So I'm the uh, Chief of Police for the City of Cyprus. And I'm a Gold Star sister. And I'm a Gold Star wife. And a proud volunteer for Honoring Our Fallen. Prior Casualty Assistance Officer with the United States Army, and the National Guard, and a current volunteer with Honoring Our Fallen. My name is Laura Herzog and I am the founder and executive director of Honoring Our Fallen. The first time I heard of Honoring the Fallen is whenever I was escorting some remains of a uh, Korean War veteran that was killed in Korea and they were being returned back to his home of record here in San Pedro, California. As part of the duties of the casualty assistance officer, it's to support the family in the return of the soldier. Um, more times than not, the soldier will be flown into a local airport or an airport close to the family, that's not a simple feat. There, it takes a lot of coordination, it takes a lot of, of, of calls and, 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 and meetings with people and to build a network of people that you can deal with and people that you know can get things done. And Honoring Our Fallen has that network established already. From the time that she met me on the plane through um, the ceremony to move the remains into the, the hearse was just the beginning. Uh, the honors there, uh, upon leaving the airport, uh, there was probably close to 30 to 40 Patriot Guard riders there waiting, um, along with police escort to escort us from uh, the airport through LA and to San Pedro to where the, the funeral home was that the remains were to be, uh, have their services and then interred. And that is one less thing that the, the casualty assistance officer needs to worry about, that he's not having to, making sure that the, the small pieces that have to fall into place will fall into place. Um, all they have to do is, is, is call r and Fallen and the small pieces will get taken care of while the casualty assistance officer can take care of the big pieces. and. You know, the casualty assistance officer has to be with the family almost every day. Uh, you accompany them to meetings, you accompany them to the, the funeral home. Uh, you help them with the process of setting up the funeral and you have to explain to them how things are going to work over the next few days, over the next few weeks. And it makes it a lot easier when you know that you have an organization like this that can help those things in the back and you can tell the families without doubt that these things are going to happen. Laura invited me to go out on a, on a hero mission. And I, I have to say that it was one of the most impactful things in my almost 30 years of law enforcement experience. From the minute we left the house, the, the planning that had taken place before I even got there, the amount of work down to the little details of the tissues in the car, or the snacks and the water bottles, um, getting to the location, having, having the casualty officer in the vehicle who all the while was trying to complete their normal duties for their work uh, back on base and still having to um, accomplish the, the hero mission for the military. Laura took charge of it all, did a phenomenal job with, with making the family feel comfortable, uh, helping the casualty officer, and then ultimately um, transporting our fallen uh, from the airport to the mortuary and then the entire process that went into it and planning that went into it was just uh, unbelievable to me. And I knew at that moment that I just had to be a part of that team uh, and play a role in some respect for, for this organization. We met Laura. Unfortunately, not when my brother was killed. I do wish we had honoring our fallen and Laura offer services that the Army didn't have or a casualty officer wasn't there to do. I remember when I first met Laura, I walked into this white room and she was waiting for me in there and we immediately began to talk about my husband and how um, he gave his life for this country. And after we went through all the details about the ceremony, I remember I felt comfortable speaking to her 
and I decided um, this would be the first person who I would openly share everything that I had gone through up until that point. When I first met Laura and was introduced to Honoring Our Fallen, um, it was the day that my son's remains were brought home. And I didn't realize the importance of what the organization did. Um, I just knew that there was someone there that was helping our family, taking pictures, um, and just there in case we needed anything. What Laura and Honor and Following does for families uh, when you get that knock on the door is something, a job that nobody wants to have, but Laura took that calling and has fulfilled it more than anyone I can think could ever do. There was just something very special about her. Um, I felt like I could open up to her. I wouldn't be judged. Uh, this is the person that I feel most comfortable um, speaking to about my feelings and my emotions and everything that um, I had been through. My Laura has been there for my family, for my sister-in-law, who is the widow of my brother, for my nieces, and has given us support emotionally, um, mentally, and that's not something you get from any casualty officer. So I got the opportunity to really get to know her and meet her. Um, just a couple months after my first meeting with her, um, I was invited to my first mom's retreat. That was six months after Tommy was killed, and um, I was apprehensive about that. I was afraid to, to go away, but um, it turned out to be the best thing that I had done. And I remember she said um, that they, she will be having um, widow retreats, and immediately I was happy actually to hear that because up until that moment I had not met another military widow um, in the area. From that point on uh, was to meet these other moms that are walking the same road that I did and to start to build that community that was going to give me a foundation to know that you know I'm going to make it, my family's going to make it and to be there for each other. I can say the people we met through Laura and Honor Our Fallen has become our family. Um, these are all these people we met, all Gold Star families, are now our family, are this family to us. It's a new family, and uh, Honor Our Fallen all the time makes sure that we're never forgotten. Knowing that there was other widows nearby that I could speak to and share my journey with just made me feel like I could someday have some closure. With Honoring Our Fallen and events that uh, Laura puts together for us. Um, it's always events that we enjoy with our new family members who know our pain, who understand that um, we just don't miss our loved one during Christmas or during a birthday. We miss them every day. And Laura makes sure that they're never forgotten and especially we're not forgotten. It's an unbelievable, phenomenal organization that does well by our veterans and service members. And I, I would like to personally say thank you to Laura and Honoring Our Fallen for all that they do for our service members and first responders. And I'm so thankful for what Honoring Our Fallen offers to families like mine. And I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you to Laura and Honor Our Fallen for always remembering all family members of the Fallen. I'm very grateful for Laura and Honoring Our Fallen for providing us the support that Gold Star families truly need and I want to thank Honor Our Fallen for everything they do for the families. And I can't thank Honor Our Fallen enough for honoring our service members, the families, our first responders, and their families with the service that this organization provides. Thank you. I can't again say I, I understand because I didn't lose a son and I didn't lose a husband. I didn't lose a dad serving. Um, but what I can tell them is, is that they can count on me 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and I will be there to do what I can to support them. And if I can't support them, then I will find the resource out there that is there to support them. And through that are retreats. Um, the retreats are healthy for me too. Um, so it goes back into when I say, how do I do what I do? When I get to go on that mom's retreat and I get to see that mom that I watched crying over her son as she's laying him to rest and I get to laugh with her and I get to see her laugh with the other moms that she's now become friends with. Um, it created what 
what I always wanted to create through these retreats, and that is a safe place where I can bring these other moms together with other moms so that they can connect. And what I love the most is, is usually it's like kind of like the night before the last day of the retreat, and it's the widows and the moms too. And, and I get to sit there and I watch and they're laughing and you can see them exchanging cell phone numbers and, and, and um, I know now that they have one more number in their phone that if the day's dark and they can't reach me because maybe I'm busy or I, you know, I, I'm serving a mission or, or whatever the case may be or their, their other, their other go-to person or their family member isn't there, that they have another number in that phone and that number is more precious than mine or any others because it's another mom or another widow or another dad or another brother or sister that is on that same journey that they are.